welcome everyone to this lecture in nonlinear dynamical systems today we are going to cover about some norms of vectors in particular we are interested in signals and then norms of operators operators are in our context systems yeah of course this is not standard there can be various types of operators but we are speaking in this context in in this context yeah so we will also speak about eventually finite gain stable that is the objective for this lecture finite gain stable we are, we are going to see the definition of what does it mean for a system to be finite gain stable for that for defining that we need these other things also and eventually we will speak about feedback interconnection being stable under what under what conditions do we speak about a feedback interconnection is stable feedback interconnection is stable in order to define this we need these concepts so today's lecture is titled norms of vectors signals operators and uh, the notion of stability of a system possibly non linear of course this will also require us to understand linear systems better yeah because i personally believe that one requires a good understanding of linear systems before one goes ahead and understands non linear systems just like one should know how to build a one floor building well before one goes ahead and starts building a five floory building five story building so we have vector spaces these are called these are called vector spaces there are various types of vector spaces but these are the simplest these are m tuples yeah there are m components m components m components of real numbers so real numbers are also called as r and hence m components are called rm one can think of as v1 v2 up to vm yeah so one could choose to call, uh, write it as a row vector like we have done here or one can write it as a column vector in any case it is m components and each component can be chosen independently as any real number hence these all together constitute rm so now one can speak of a norm for a vector v v in rm suppose v is equal to this one can speak of v norm yeah so norm we might have seen in the beginning of this course already so norm is required to satisfy a few conditions but we can think of already start seeing some examples so the two norm of v is defined as so we use this symbol for define when we have a colon on any of the two sides it means one is being defined as the other the since the colon is on the left side the left side is being defined by what we will write now v1 square plus v2 square plus up to v mth component square and then together square root so this is the most common notion of distance which we call as the two norm which is also called euclidean distance this is our conventional notion of distance euclidean distance or euclidean norm as i said this is also called as two norm why because instead of the second power and then taking square root one could take any power one could take the pth power and still it will satisfy the notion of a norm so v1 to the pth power plus v2 to the pth power plus up to v mth to the pth power but then if p is odd this doesn't ensure that these are all positive quantities so we'll take absolute values of each of these real numbers yeah and we'll add after taking we are going to add after taking the pth power of the absolute values yeah if if p is 2 or if it is any even number then this absolute value is not required to be taken they are all real numbers positive or negative and for even powers they will always be positive after taking the even pth power and after adding them all we'll take the pth root yeah so for any p greater than or equal to 1 this is how the pth norm of a vector v is defined yeah one can also take the so called infinity norm yeah what is infinity and how is that related to p one can check that if you have m fixed components and you go on raising p 
you make p 2 3 4 5 and you take this absolute value and then take the pth power and add them and then take the 1 by pth power then it will eventually converge to the maximum of the absolute value of the ith component where i varies from i varies from what from 1 to m when you say max over i of the absolute value of vi it will turn out to be the value that pth norm of v converges as p tends to infinity yeah so this is i which is same as saying where i ranges from 1 up to m yeah as take different different values of i from 1 to m and for each of these cases look at the absolute value of the ith component of v and look at the maximum over these m components of the absolute value and that is defined as the infinity norm and how is that related to p it also turns out to become equal to v p as p tends to infinity so this is another notion of norm all these norms have a notion of distance they all satisfy our conventional feeling of distance so norm so why do we not take p less than or strictly less than 1 because a norm of a vector has to satisfy three conditions 1 2 and 3 what are those conditions for any vector v the norm has to be greater than or equal to 0 we are not we are not comfortable with a distance which is equal to minus 2 yeah any norm if somebody says this is the norm of this vector it had better be a positive quantity and if the norm is equal to 0 that is only when only when the vector v is equal to 0 yeah if somebody tells that look here is a vector whose norm is equal to 0 that should happen only when v is equal to 0 yeah but for the zero vector it obviously happens because of the second rule that we will write yeah if somebody writes if somebody scales a vector that is nothing but the norm of the same vector multiplied by the absolute value yeah alpha is a scalar it is a real number from what we are doing in this case so if some somebody multiplies that vector by 5 then get scaled by 5 or by minus 5 minus 5 means you just multiply scale it by 5 times and reverse the, reverse the direction both of this should just result in magnification of that vector by 5 times independent of plus 5 or minus 5 that is why the absolute value so this automatically means that when v is equal to 0 then your norm is equal to 0 that is why this only when is playing a role in item 1 and the third one is so called triangular inequality yeah this cannot be greater than v1 norm plus v2 norm all these three are satisfied for any v v1 v2 alpha for any vectors v1 v2 and v and for any real number for any scalar alpha these three inequalities have to be satisfied this one just says that the norm cannot be a negative quantity and it is uh, norm is equal to 0 only when v is equal to 0 second one says about the scaling by a scalar alpha and the third one speaks about the so called triangular inequality what is the, what is triangle and what is inequality about it if this is vector v1 this is vector v2 then v1 plus v2 by the so called parallelogram rule is this yeah so the length of this can't be greater than length of this plus length of this yeah that is what is triangular inequality this one is v1 plus v2 so these three together are required for any notion of norm and the pth norm satisfy all these three conditions but that for that we require p to be greater than or equal to 1 so how do these uh, norms play a role we are actually concerned with signals yeah so consider consider function f that from real numbers for any real number it has m components yeah in what what does that mean f the independent variable r means you we, we in our course because we are dealing with a systems course this uh, independent variable we like to think of as time one can also think of it as space but in any case there is only one independent variable f of t at any time t f of t is a vector in r m this is the meaning that f is a map from r to r m yeah so we can speak of that vectors norm we can speak of its two norm now we are going to in be interested in looking at all so called square integrable functions yeah we we'll take any function f from r to r m yeah so this 
integrable Inti the set of all such integrable functions is also called as l l i think stands for lebesgue thanks to uh, one friend of mine called ajay who told me that l uh, that we use so often in l as in l2 l lp all that l stands for lebesgue and the person who came up with a very concise a uh, very systematic definition of integration after riemann so l2 we are going to define now l2 is a we are going to say what is this set it is a set of we will define it as a set of all functions from r to r m such that such that some property is satisfied what property from minus infinity to infinity this take the two norm this this should be finite yeah let me write this little more slowly and clearly so what is the l2 norm defined and what is the l2 space defined it is defined as consider the space of all functions from r to rm which all functions will be taken put into this set take all those functions r to rm and check take all those f for which this vertical bar should be read as for which it can also be read as such that all those f from r to rm such that the two norm this two norm stands because at any time t this is a vector in rm you integrate this from minus infinity to infinity integrate this with respect to time this should be a finite value yeah this finite value itself of course we will very soon define as the l2 norm of the signal f but if this norm is finite if this after integrating if you get a finite value then that f you will pick and put include into this set l2 so what is l2 the set of all such signals yeah it turns out that this will be a vector space what is vector space about it you take any two functions f here you add them that will also continue to be in l2 if you uh, take any function f and you multiply it by a scalar it will also continue to be in this and also the zero vector is there in this in for this set the zero vector is a zero signal the signal with which is equal to zero for all time t yeah so this is what uh, makes l2 r to rm into a vector space of course you may not be interested in r you may be interested in only functions that take values from zero to infinity to rm yeah these are that the function that we are considering here the domain could be different this one is the co domain the vector space in which it takes its values at any time t but t itself need not be varying from minus infinity to plus infinity but it could be varying from only 0 to infinity this is defined as set of all f from this domain to rm such that integral now we will take not from minus infinity but only from 0 to infinity of this f of t dt sorry yeah this if this is less than infinity then we'll go ahead and put that function f inside this yeah so notice that this two here is different from this two here this two here refers to f of t as a vector in rm and there you take the euclidean norm yeah but sorry there is one important thing i missed so what is this two then this two refers to that you take the norm and you take the square here yeah also here i should have been putting a two here so this two up here refers to this subscript be below this l yeah let me see if i missed the two in the previous slide here also i had only half written this this is slide number 4 here also we need a two this two here refers to this yeah so let me just quickly speak about and these twos do not have to be related yeah more precisely we can speak of l2 space from r to rm f take all those functions f from r to rm such that integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of t 
this norm we can also take as an infinity norm, but still you have to take the second power d t as an infinity. Yeah, I hope this is clear that if you are taking L 2 space here, then the power should also be 2 here in the numer in the superscript. After taking the infinity norm of the vector f of t at any time t, you take the second power and then you integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity and that should be a finite value that should not be infinity. Yeah? The reason that people often skip writing this is because the set that you get here is eventually the same. The set of all functions that you take will eventually be the same whether you take infinity below or you take 2 below or p equal to 1 or any other p greater than or equal to 1. Whatever norm, whatever norm you take in R m, that norm does not decide what functions come into this set L 2. What certainly decides is the fact that you took the second power and still it is finite. Yeah? So, clearly well it is not obvious, but it is important to know that L r r m is not equal to L 2 r to r m yeah? nor is that equal to we will quickly see some examples. Yeah? L infinity we are yet to define, but this 1, 2 or infinity refers to what you put in the power after taking the norm of f of t that norm of f of t we have indicated here that is a norm in r m. These sets are not, e not the same. The reason that people often skip the specifically which norm we took in r m is because there is some important very important result saying that all these norms in finite dimension vector spaces are equivalent. Yeah, because of that it turns out to not matter which norm you take here. Of course, the actual 2 norm of L 2 norm of that function f does depend on which norm you take, but as long as you do it consistently it will not matter much in all our arguments. Okay, so, let, let some function f be inside this L 2 r 2 r m. This already means that it is square integrable. This condition that we have written here means that it is square integrable. The square inti whether it is square integrable or not that particular statement does not depend on whether you take infinity here or you take 1 here or 2 here it only depends the square refers to the power 2 up here. So, you take f here then this f we will define its L 2 norm. L 2 norm is defined as integral from minus infinity to infinity f of t to d t and we have taken already the square here. So we are going to take square root here. Yeah? So, notice that I have skipped writing this here whether it is whether I take 2 or infinity it does not it does matter what the L 2 norm of f is, but it will we, we have to only do it consistently and for this course why do not we just stick to the 2 norm in R m. One can also speak about the one can also speak about the infinity norm L infinity norm. So, that for that we have to define what is L infinity r to r m that is defined as the set of all f from r to r m in which for the purpose of this argument why do not we say continuous huh? f is continuous. Continuous is not required, but then uh, I will tell you why uh, it does make a difference eventually max max overall t of f of t yeah max of this is finite so this is what is uh, this is a set of all the functions whose maximum value is finite but then this max is taken over what t varying over what range yeah t inside r so, notice that this r is not a finite set, it is not a bounded set, it is not uh, to be precise a compact set, because of that this max may not exist. We are a little concerned that over a bounded set, over a compact set to be precise the maximum always exists, but over r there are these uh, strange problems. So, we, we need to correct this max to sup. Yeah? So, we will I will tell you what the difference is. So, suppose here is a function f of t with sort of uh, 
goes on increasing and is saturating yeah and it saturate seems to saturate to 1 but for no value of t does it become equal to 1 yeah f of t is always strictly less than 1 for all for all t but at t tending to infinity it reaches 1 yeah so we want to know what is the what is the lowest value which is above all values of f of t yeah you take all values of absolute value of f of t and look at the smallest value above all of them that is called as a sup that is not strictly above but greater than or equal to so in this case it is equal to 1 that sup is equal to 1 but sup is always strictly greater than f of t it is never equal to f of t for any value of t why because f of t is strictly less than 1 for all t so here in this example the max is never attained the maximum values the, the maximum doesn't exist why because is is 0 0.99 the maximum value no it goes and exceeds 0 0.99 eventually so there is no maximum value but the supremum exists the supremum is equal to 1 yeah so this is the important subtle difference between sup and max and over compact sets over a set over which you are looking for the maximum if that set is closed and bounded then the two turn out to be equal then the soup is equal to max that time the maximum is attained to be precise then the supremum is attained so now important statement is now coming back to why we assumed f is continuous now uh, we want to come back to uh, whether l infinity uh, whether the infinity uh, l infinity norm turns out to uh, be the limit as p tends to infinity of l p norm yeah there it turns out that if, if it is not continuous then here is an example that look at this function let's say which is equal to 1 yeah, eventually but only for one value only for t equal to 3 it takes some different yeah, it's equal, this is equal to 1 here but for t equal to 1 it is equal to 5 yeah of course clearly the graph is not to scale but f of 3 equal to 5 otherwise f of t is less than or equal to 1 for for all t not equal to 5 yeah so look at this graph there is a small hole here only for t equal to 3 it turns out to take value equal to 5 but for all other values of t it is less than or equal to 1 only for one value of t equal to 3 it, it takes value 5. So, one can ask below this how much area is covered under this point uh, area is 0 thickness of this area is equal to 1 thickness is 0 and height is 5. So, height into breadth so area is equal to 0 because the breadth is equal to 0 thickness is equal to 0. So, you might say how much area is covered under this point under this point area covered is 0 for the area to be non zero you need at least you need to be you need equal to you need f to be equal to 5 for at least some width yeah at only one point if it is equal to a large value that cannot change the l infinity norm that is indeed it turns out to be the case if you take the power p and you let p tend to infinity so uh, let me uh, tell a slightly more correct definition not slightly more this is indeed a very correct definition but this is when f need not be continuous so, uh, L infinity con consists of the set of all points like this. And, and at only one point, it cannot matter, it cannot become infinity anyway. So, here notice that here we are not requiring it to be continuous, sup over all t in R. Or of f of t norm yeah as long as the supremum is less than infinity as long as the supremum is less than infinity you will take all those f and put it inside the set l infinity yeah what i have written here is less than infinity so this is what constitutes the set l infinity but if you have a f inside l infinity what is its norm till now for every p it turned out to just be its lp norm yeah, but for l infinity it will turn out to be slightly different we need that essential supremum which i will come to in the next slide for any f in lp
for p greater than or equal to 1, but not equal to infinity. Yeah. What is its LP norm? It is defined as integral from minus infinity to infinity. Why minus infinity to plus infinity? Because we wrote the domain of f is equal to r of the norm of f of t, the pth power for any time t, f of t is a vector in rm, which norm to take in rm that we are supposed to write in the subscript, we have decided to not write. Why? Because we are going to stick to the same norm for all our arguments, you can take the two norm there. You do not, you are not forced to take the pth norm in rm for that purpose. So, we will integrate only when p is less than infinity. Yeah, after taking the pth power, but now that we are defining this as the LP norm, sorry, this is already finite. If you are taking the LP norm, this is already finite, you will take the pth root of this value. Yeah. For any f in LP, we know already that this integral is finite. Only because the integral is finite, we have decided to put this f inside this set. Now, you take that f and compute this value. You know it is a finite value that we will define after taking the 1 by pth power, we will take the pth root and that is defined as the LP norm of the function f. But for L infinity norm, this we are going to say is supremum over all t in R of f of t, f of t is norm, yeah? f of t is norm, which norm do you take? Again, it does not matter as I said but we prefer writing this essential supremum. What is this essential supremum? This full form stands for essential. Yeah, This what I am saying here is what I studied several years ago thanks to my teacher Professor Banavar. So, this essential supremum stands for that this f should have reached this value over at least or over at least some small interval. It cannot be equal to this value at just one point. Yeah? So, this is t f of t and at one point if it is equal to 5 that is t equal to 3 then the essential supremum will be equal to 1 and not 5. The essential word ensures that the supremum value there are many values of t close to the supremum value very close arbitrarily close and uh, 1 qualifies for this number, but for f of t equal to 5 f of 3 equal to 5, there is only one point t equal to 3. That is why this essential ensures that, that so this for this particular f of t l infinity norm, yeah, l infinity of this particular function turns out to be equal to, turns out to be equal to 1. Hmm. So, let me uh, take a concrete example. So, here is a function. One minus five at one point is equal to six at t equal to four. Yeah. So here is a function f which is never equal to minus five but it seems to be saturating to minus 5 on t tending to minus infinity. It grows like this for t equal to 4 alone only for t equal to 4 it suddenly becomes equal to 6. This is where continuity would have helped us, but for t equal to 4 alone it has suddenly jumped to value 6. After that it seems to be saturating to 1. So, f of t max after taking the absolute value max is equal to 6. Yeah. Sup of f of t also equal to 6. Yeah. Sup and max over what? Over t tending varying from minus infinity to plus infinity, but essential supremum of f of t equal to plus 5, plus 5 yeah, because we are taking the norm. Is the essential supremum attained for any value of t? No, it is 
converging to minus 5 as t tends to minus infinity, it is never equal to minus 5. For no value of t, it is equal to minus 5. But still the essential supremum turns out to be equal to 5 because it, it is for enough values of t yeah, to be precise for those who are inclined for a set of measure greater than 0 for this length strictly greater than 0, it has come very close to minus 5. So, when you take the norm, it will become plus 5. So, that is why the essential supremum indeed is equal to 5. Yeah. So, f f l infinity norm is equal to plus 5 yeah? and this will indeed be equal to the value when you take lpth norm of phi of f and let p tend to infinity that is the best part and if f were continuous then the then this uh, 6 would automatically get ruled out for continuous functions for each value is attained over a set of measure non zero is not not necessarily attained but it comes very close to it over a set of measure non zero that is what uh, that is how continuity helps okay these this is only about norms of signals now we are to also see we want to think of all our operators all our systems that take input u and give output y and that is an operator h yeah so h takes signals from where is the question and gives and gives output in are the input and output in L2, are they in L infinity that is the question we want to answer. For that purpose it turns out that we will have to extend our spaces L1, L2, L, L infinity, Lp will all have to be extended. Yeah? So, uh, we will quickly see what is the meaning of L2 E r to r m this extension is this e for extension is coming because our systems take signals from not l2 necessarily but l2 e and give you signals possibly in l2 e if h is not stable we eventually want to say that even though u is in l2 y might be in l2 e yeah that is the purpose that we are going to define this extended space as soon as we define this l2 e space we will see some examples of what is in l2 what is in l infinity what is in l infinity but not in l2 etc those examples we are going to see now so consider sin t is this yeah this is how uh, is how sin t looks. Is this bounded as t tends to infinity is this finite? Yes. Many, uh, is there a value that is uh, greater than or equal to every value of absolute value of sin t? Sin t bounded. Yeah. What is the maximum value? Plus 1. What is the minimum value? We are not supposed to see whether sin t is bounded, we are supposed to see whether absolute value of sin t is bounded. Yeah, luckily that value absolute value is also equal to plus 1. So, sin t is less than or equal to 1 for all t. Yeah. So, that, that is why sin t is in L infinity. What is the range from r to r? At any uh, for any value of t, sin t gives you a real number. Yeah, of course, it may not be giving all real numbers as, as its output, as its uh, range. Nevertheless, every value sin t gives is a real number. So, sin t is an example of L infinity. Is it in L2? That is what we will see now. Can we integrate? Can we take sin t to norm second power dt from minus infinity to infinity? Yeah, we have taken sin t this is absolute value of sin t because sin t is actually a real number it is a scalar to no, it is Euclidean norm its norm is nothing but absolute value. Yeah. So, for each period there is some area under this so over this yeah. when you integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity this is not less than infinity yeah it, it becomes unbounded this integral doesn't exist we will say minus infinity to infinity 
sin t dt square does not exist. Of course, in layman terms we say the integral is equal to infinity, that, that, that is not correct mathematical language. We will say the integral does not exist. So, we will say sin, sin t is not that, so we are not allowed to take this function and put it into L2. Yeah, it is not in L2. But now we can ask what if we chop it? What if we stop it at some? Yeah, for, uh, for the purpose of this L2 e, we prefer considering L2 0 to infinity only on r plus to r. Yeah, the same signal sin t, yeah, sin t is also in L infinity from 0 to infinity to r. Yeah, why? Because over this range also it is bounded. In fact, it is bounded from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, over a subset also it will of course be bounded. So, this it is inside this. So, we are interested in extending this space actually because we are interested in only future, future being chopped or future being extended. So, this sin t which was there in L infinity r to r is also in L infinity 0 to infinity to r. Yeah. So, this sin t is unfortunately not in L2 0 to infinity to r also, it is not in that, it is neither in, yeah. So, we ask the question is sin t question mark, is it in L2 r to r, we have already answered the question as no. What about 0 to infinity, yeah answer to this is also no. Yeah. What is this sin t square? Now, we are going to integrate this. Yeah. So, area under this is all for each period it is some non-zero positive value. So, when you integrate from 0 to infinity into 0 to infinity of sin t square d t, this does not exist, does not exist. Yeah. So, we will say sin t does not belong to L 2 0 to infinity. Yeah. Of course, if you make on this side from infinity instead of infinity, if you take a finite value, then sin t will belong. Yeah, that brings us to this extension. So, what we are going to do is, we are going to say that our signals sin t etcetera do not really belong from 0 to plus infinity, they are always up to some finite value. Yeah, we never ask as t tends to plus infinity what happens, whether the norm, whether the total integral is finite or not is not a question we ask for so, for so much in the future. So, what we will do is, we are going to say some f is said to be in L 2 e 0 to infinity to R m if f tau, we are going to define what is this f tau is in L 2 for each tau in R plus, yeah, each tau in positive value only makes sense. Of course, the question arises, I have already defined this f tau without telling what is I already defined L 2 e using f tau without telling what is this tau f tau. So, given f and, huh, and we also take a tau, tau also inside this range, it does not make sense to chop at negative values. Yeah. So, f tau is a new function that is defined as it is equal to f of t for 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to tau yeah? and is equal to 0 for, for tau greater than sorry for t greater than tau. Yeah? So, the, so, what we have done we have chopped whatever for all values of t greater than tau, we have chopped it to 0. 
this is the definition of the function f tau. f was already a function from 0 to infinity to, to r. Somebody gives us a value tau, some positive value and we have used that val value tau to define a new function f tau. f tau is also a function from 0 to infinity to r. It behaves like f as long as t is less than or equal to tau. For t strictly greater than tau, it is just equal to 0. So, we will see a graph of such a function. So, for the purpose of this discussion, we are considering f defined only for non-negative values of t. Yeah. This is how f of t looks suppose. Let me take a different color pen. So, here is another this is for this blue one is equal to f 3 where we have assumed that we have chopped it at tau equal to 3. Yeah? We can speak of f 5 as f 5 is this new function then that is in green that gets chopped a little further. From here onwards it becomes 0. Yeah? This is a green one. So, we can chop it at different different values of tau and once it is chopped it is sent to 0. That chopped version is what we call f tau. Yeah? So, f tau is also an element of from 0 to infinity it's a function from 0 to infinity to r. Yeah? If, if f is in 0 to infinity to r this is the meaning of a chopped signal. So, now we are concerned that there are many signals which are in L infinity but not in L 2. Yeah? There are various types of signals which are not in L 2. Perhaps their chopped versions are that is our next thing yeah? that is what we will see in detail now. Consider sin of t again this is not in L 2. Yeah? We already saw that it is not in L 2. L 2 which? From this, from this to R. This is how it is called the domain codomain. Sin t is not in this. Why? Because it has what we call um, infinite energy over this range. But for any for any chop, yeah, chop, chop sin t at any at any tau in that range over whatever range it is defined. Yeah, chop sin t. At, yeah, then then sin t chopped. Yeah, we know that that is in L 2. Yeah, sin t is not too bad. As soon as you chop it for any value of tau, it comes into L 2, the chopped one. Yeah, so we will say sin t, though it is not in L 2, it is in L 2 e. So, how is this an extension? Sin t was not in L2, but for every chopped version of sin t, for every tau you chop it and it is in L2. So, why do not we put it in not L2, but L2 e. We will extend the space L2 to L2 e, where for every chop that function is in L2. Yeah? So, this is recall uh, our definition, this is how we defined. So, this is our 14th slide. So, we will say f is in L2 e from this domain to, to this codomain, if f chopped is in L 2, but for each tau, yeah, it, it is not okay that you chop it at some carefully designed tau. You can always chop it at tau equal to 0 and always come back to L 2, it will become a 0 signal. No, for each tau in R plus you chop and it comes into L 2, then you will say that function f was not too bad. You will put it into L 2 extended. Yeah? So, in you one should note that what is not obvious is that this is genuinely an, ex genuinely an extension. Yeah? What does it mean to be an extension? L 2 0 to infinity the extension word is justified because of this property L 2 e. If without chopping already the function was square integrable of course, then for every chop also it will be integrable. That is why this one is contained inside this 
and we already have an example to say that the two sets are not equal. Sin t is an example of what is here, but not here. Hence, this set is a strictly larger set of this. In other words, this is a proper subset of this. Yeah? So, this is how extension is defined. Let us see some more examples of L infinity extended, L 1 extended, etcetera. So, consider f of t equal to t. Yeah? We are interested in f only for positive values of t. This is our so called ramp. This is a ramp signal. So, it is is this f f of t is it an L infinity? Answer is no. Answer is no. Why? It is not even bounded, it goes on becoming very large. Yeah? But you chop f of f to any value of tau, yeah. For whatever value you chop, any f tau looks like this. F tau is also again a function of t. Tau is some value here. It goes on increasing till there. From there on, it is zero. Yeah. So for each tau, it is bounded. What is the value? Maximum value is tau. So for each fixed tau, for each finite value of tau, it is bounded. Is it uniformly bounded? No, the bound depends on tau. In that sense, it is not uniformly bounded in tau. Yeah. So, this f tau is in L infinity. Thank God. For each for each tau in hence we will say f is in L infinity E, L infinity extended. Yeah. Hence, f of t equal to t, f is in L infinity extended. What is the domain and codomain? So, from now on, anyway, this is always going to be our domain. Yeah, and this codomain is often clear from the context. So, we will just say L infinity e. Yeah, so the function t is in L infinity e, but is t in L infinity? No, this is yes. Yeah? So, it is not bounded. What about so this, this uh, also shows again that L infinity is also a proper subset of L infinity e. Yeah? So, we need this extended class of signals, all our signals live in this space, extended spaces. What about step input? Step signal, impulse, ramp, sin t phi, sin of t, okay. Cos cos t, sin t cos t are expected to not be very different. What about t square? Yeah, so these are all in what? Check whether they are in L one, L two, L infinity, L one e, L two e. L infinity. This is an extremely good exercise to try oneself for each of these signals. Why these are important signals? Step signal, ramp, sin t cos t t square. Impulse is not a function. Yeah. No need to check of this for here because impulse is not. A, yeah. Till now we had been saying f is a map from is a signal. It's a Lebesgue integrable function. All all our f's were functions. Is impulse of this type? Impulse? No. Yeah. So please don't check for this. If somebody says is the impulse in L1, it is not even a function. Is it in L2? Not a function. No question of checking whether impulse is in any of these sets because it is not even a function. Strictly speaking, it is what we call a distribution. Yeah. Thanks to Schwartz, who made this theory very precise. Impulse is not a function, it is a distribution. Of course, impulse is a limit, it is a limit of a sequence of functions, a sequence of functions each of which has uh, area under it is 1, 
and it is not equal to 0 for a smaller and smaller thinner and thinner interval around 0. Yeah? It could be the limit of a sequence of functions, but itself upon, lim about, upon the limit itself is the impulse distribution not a function. So, this brings us to um, what our operators yeah, our h we want to ask is this h stable yeah, is the magnification it causes to the input to give you output is the magnification bounded by some value that bound magnification for that we need these L 2 these norms it, it is with respect to these norms that we speak about the bound. So, h operator yeah, takes takes input signal and gives output. Yeah, this input and output live where? They live in some such extended space. Yeah, you can say L infinity extended and output is also L infinity extended. These extended spaces themselves do not have a two norm, they do not have an infinity norm. The operator possibly non-linear. Yeah, of course, we will see what all this means possibly non-linear. What this all means in the case of linear systems is of course, something we will see in much detail. So, now we are going to ask when, when input, input in L 2 E then of course, huh? then of course, output y in L 2 E. Yeah? This is not too surprising, but what is good about what we will define as stable systems is when u in L 2 then y in L 2 question mark. Yeah? If so, then h is what we will call stable. Stable of course, is in a very general sense. This is input output stable. This is not Lyapunov stable. We have studied Lyapunov stable. There it was for autonomous systems and here we are speaking of input output stability. So, this is the question we are going to ask and in a very loose sense, we will say if the u was in L 2, for every u in L 2, if the output is also in L 2, then in some sense we will say h is good. Why? Because in general u in L 2 e goes to y in L 2 e. If you restrict the input to L 2 from L 2 e when you restrict it to L 2, that does not mean y will also get very conveniently restricted from L 2 e to L 2. Yeah, but if that happens, then h is kind of good, then h is stable. So, we will stop today's lecture with the precise definition of stable. So, h is called finite gain stable, finite gain stable that refers to L 2 stable let us say. Yeah? Uh, please introduce this L 2 stable if y tau L 2 is less than or equal to some gamma, this is gamma u tau L 2 plus beta for all tau and u in L 2 e. Yeah? What are this gamma and beta? If there exist gamma and beta greater than 0 such that this inequality is true for every chopping tau and for every u in L 2 e, for every signal u that you give as input, the corresponding output is bounded by such a quantity in which the gamma and beta are some, some two positive numbers that cannot be changed when you take different different tau and u. Yeah, please notice the sequence of arguments. So, we will call h as finite gain L 2 stable if you can find two numbers gamma and beta both greater than 0 such that this inequality is true for every tau and for every u in L 2 e. Yeah? So, this is it is easy to confuse this gamma as y, this is gamma while this is y. 
So, this is the definition of finite gain L2 stable. Yeah. Notice that of course, gamma and beta are clearly not unique. If you have found one gamma and beta, you can take a larger gamma and larger beta and still this inequality will be satisfied because each of these quantities are positive. This quantity is positive, this quantity is positive. You multiply them by a larger number and still this inequality will be satisfied. So, clearly gamma and beta are not unique. So, greater than 0, as soon as, as soon as such a finite gamma and beta exist, you will say this H is finite gain L2 stable. So, in our next lecture, we will see what this means for the case that H is a linear system. Yeah, that is the next thing that we will see in our next lecture. Okay, this uh, ends today's lecture.